Hi everyone, it's Pete here. So today I'm going to show you how you can get your RC car tyres off using boiling water and hopefully without burning your hands off. But first of all, I was just going to explain why I need to get the tyres off because you might find it highly fascinating. But if not, just fast forward this bit. So I was testing out the version 2 3S Armour Typhon that I bought recently second half from a friend Nick and generally I was really impressed with it. But have a look at what's happening with the wheels. They are wibbly wobbling about like nobody's business. Now a little bit of imbalance doesn't really matter but this was sort of shaking the car apart so I needed to sort something out. Now you might be looking at that and thinking it was because there was mud in the wheels which there was but I did also test it with the wheels thoroughly cleaned and they were still wobbling all over the place so I figured that the mud and the grit and everything must have got inside the tyre. So I'll just show you with this Tamiya lunchbox wheel and tyre because it's easier to see. So the wheel has got holes in it and that's to let the air go in and out and that gives it the right squashability. That's a technical term. I think some of the early Tamiyas actually didn't have any air holes and uh, ends up being a bit bouncy, but what this does, it gives it a bit more give off road. And it does give a nice ride with the lunchbox. With these Tamiya ones, it's just the rigidity of the tire that supports the weight. But what we tend to have on the modern RC cars is a softer rubber compound and a foam insert to maintain the shape. You can see on this granite wheel, this is from a version two, you still got the holes there in the wheels. And that's where the grit can get in. And the trouble is, if grit and water and everything gets in there, it sort of doesn't come out. The wheel spinning is just forcing the grit out. And the trouble is with having the foam is that the grit all gets stuck into the foam. So it doesn't matter so much on the lunchbox wheel if you get a bit of dirt in there because it gets distributed more evenly because there's no foam in there. And also it's easy to get out because you can just stick that in a bucket of water and sort of wring it out. But say with this, the grit gets stuck. And if it gets stuck in there unevenly, which it probably will, then it becomes unbalanced. So when I glue tires on, I tend to use this super glue, also known as CA glue. I think at the factory they use something very similar. And one way to release the bond of that glue is with heat. And I have seen people put these in the oven and I tried that and I just stank the oven out and um, stank the house out and I wasn't very popular and I didn't get the tires. I think I melted the wheel a bit as well. So I'm using the boiling water method because uh, boiling water only obviously gets up to boiling points and uh, I've had much more success. This is a wheel and tyre from my Senton 3S version 3 and what they did with the version 3 was to put the holes in the tyres instead of in the wheels. So any water and grit that goes in should get flung immediately out with a centrifugal force. So on the Typhon here I did try putting holes around the tyres and uh, rinsing them in water and then spinning the wheels to get the water out again see if the grit would come out with it. But I think what had happened is that the grit had gone into the foam too much and so they were still really unbalanced. So hence why I need to get the tyres off to get the grit out. So to the kitchen. No, the kitchen's that way. So for this method you'll need some thin knitted gloves, some washing up gloves or waterproof work gloves, an old saucepan, a weak lemon drink, some water, a heat source and some RC car wheels with tyres that need removing. First boil some water, drink your weak lemon drink now. Put on your thin wool gloves. Then put your waterproof gloves over the top. Now this should protect you from the heat, but uh, don't blame me if you burn your hands. This is at your own risk. Now put the tyres in and squeeze them a bit just to make sure the water goes inside. And leave this for a few minutes. Okay, so after a few minutes to see if you can prise away the tie. See that's coming away now. Be very careful not to let the water squirt on you because um, obviously there's the hole in the tire and if you squeeze then the water might spray on you. So like I say, just be very careful with this. You can see the tires coming away there nicely. There are limits to how much these will protect you from the hot water so don't put your fingers under the water for too long. So you don't force this because you don't want to tear the rubber. Just sort of uh, keep putting it in the water until it comes away easily. So look at all that sand that was in there. Just going to give that a rinse. Okay. 
Okay, so back in the hobby room. Now I've done that with all the four wheels and I'm just letting them dry out. Now I was just gonna say about these gloves. I was only saying use thin gloves because uh, they'll then fit under the rubber gloves. If you can find some big enough rubber gloves and obviously you can fit them over some thicker gloves and the thicker the gloves are, the more heat insulation you'll get. Ideally you could use some sort of heat proof oven gloves like these, but uh, it's just a matter of trying to find some rubber gloves that'll fit over the top. So these have had a chance to dry overnight. These foams are a little bit raggedy to be honest, but I'm gonna use them because uh, I can't be bothered to wait for some new ones to show up. So it's making some holes in the tire using a five mil drill. So now that the tires have got air holes in, what I've done is to fill in the holes in the wheels with some glue gun glue. So sand and dirt won't be able to go in through the wheel now. It'll only be able to go in through the tire where it should immediately get thrown out again. So I just need to put these back together and glue them up again. Need to get the tire to rest nicely on that edge there. As far as I can see, these tires aren't directional, so it doesn't matter which way they go on. So it's got to make sure that this is nicely seated on the bead there. Okay, that looks all right. Okay, so I've got my pound shop super glue. It's just a matter of sort of uh, prizing back the tire a little bit, putting some glue under and uh, seating it back. Got a bit mad with the super glue there, but anyway, just wipe off the excess. What I tend to do is one side and then let that dry, and then do the other side so you're not sort of uh, getting the glue on your hands while you're trying to do the other side. Okay, so the glue on the front has dried, so I'll just do the back. Okay, so I've done all four wheels the same. Now let's see if it's actually worked. Yeah, that looks good and I've also road tested it off camera and it runs really well. So anything's need to do with this now, it's got a bit of play in the steering and the suspension like these things tend to after a while. So I've got the uh, pivot ball set for this. I've done the shock tower brace on the front, I just need to make one for the back. So I'm basically gonna do all the mods on this that I did on my Senton. So check out my Senton mods videos if you're interested. Oh, and let me know if anyone got the wheat lemon drink reference without having to Google it. It should have been in a flask, really, to be an authentic comedy reference. A flask of wheat lemon drink. <laughs> That's it for now. Thanks ever so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.